Okay, I want to dive a little deeper into balancing the M5. It's a little bit different than the M10, so it will take some time to illustrate exactly how I do it and some of the tips and tricks that our team has developed. Um, I actually find the with the full camera cage, the M5 is a little bit easier to balance. Uh, the important things to understand is this top clamp. When you loosen this one clamp, it allows you to adjust both roll and tilt on the top clamp. On the bottom, the middle clamp allows you to adjust tilt fore aft, and the outer two allow you to adjust roll. So I've got the top clamp loose right now and the bottom middle clamp. And as you can see, this allows the camera to easily slide fore and aft. And because the camera is captured on these two plates, top and bottom, I find it's much easier to adjust because it's, it's more constrained in the way it moves than it is on the M10. Um, so what I do is I hold roll because let's say roll wasn't balanced yet, and I, I move the tilt fore aft very slightly and then I remove my hand to check and see where it is. So it keeps falling forward so I know it, keeps, it needs to go back. So it's still falling forward very slightly but we're really close. So still falling forward a little bit. There it wants to stay. So I'm going to clamp that down. So we've got good tilt fore aft balance now. Um, this is balanced from a previous session so it's, it's right on as far as tilt vertical but let's, let's mess it up a little bit so we can so I can illustrate exactly what we're doing. So I've loosened these uh, for the vertical adjustment of the camera cage. There's four little clamps on the side um, of the, the clamp that attaches to the motor on this side and then the, the clamp that attaches to the tilt axis bearing here. So I'm going to take this whole camera cage and I'm going to shift it. I'm going to shift it way down so the setup is very bottom heavy. So what you'll see now, the way we check the tilt vertical balance, what we're trying to see is there's an imaginary line going through the center of this bearing and the center of the motor bearing. Imagine an axis going right through there. We want this whole tilt assembly to be balanced about that axis. So one way to check is to tip it vertical like this, you know, and see where it wants to go. So you can see right now it's very bottom heavy. All the weight is well below that axis, that imaginary axis line. So when I let go, it wants to flop down instantly. Conversely, if it was top heavy, which I'll illustrate, so when I tip it up like this or forward, it wants to keep going. So you can see the, C, the center of gravity is well above that axis. And when I let go, it wants to just keep going. So we're trying, to, we're trying to take the center of mass of this whole mechanism and align it with the axis that goes from the tilt axis bearing to the tilt bearing or the tilt motor. So I'm going to bring it back down. And the way I adjust this, I kind of put my thumbs on the clamp and then my other fingers on the carbon tubes and it allows you to apply pretty smooth and constant pressure which allows you to very finely adjust it. So you can see I'm still, so I'm bottom heavy now, so I'm going to slide it up a little bit. So you can see I'm still bottom heavy. Uh, so we're, I'm getting close. So you can see it looks really close. I'm going to clamp this back down. And then to check tilt vertical balance, I'm going to go to a variety of tilt settings. And the camera should want to stay. You saw earlier when I was very bottom heavy or very top heavy, the camera didn't want to stay wherever I put it. But now you can see that we've taken and the entire, the, the center of gravity of this entire cage, we've aligned with the axis between the tilt motor and the tilt bearing axis. So because of that, it stays wherever I put it. And the, the effect of this is that the tilt motor now is doing very little work to stabilize this. So what that means is you'll get better stability and better shot performance. Um, so let's move on to roll. Roll's fairly simple, I think, now with the dual cage. Uh, so the outer two clamps on the bottom allow you to adjust roll. Then we need to loosen the top clamp to allow it to slide side by side, side to side. So the whole thing slides really easily. So you can see roll is uh, easy to tell if it's out of balance. So you can see right now, and I let go, it wants to roll severely over that way. So let's slide it. So I'm just going to slide it slowly. Okay, so that's looking pretty close. Sometimes roll can be a little tough to tell how accurate the balance is. I like to use a little, I like to do a method where I kind of let it go and see what it wants to do. And what I'm looking for is symmetrical performance on each side. So. Sometimes with a really heavy camera package or if these cables get a little bound up, it will want to self-level. And in, if it does want to self-level, no matter what setting you find, what I look for is 
that it self-levels self in the same way each way. And that tells you that it's symmetric about the roll axis. But ideally, when you have roll axis balanced, you want to be able to put it in any orientation in the roll axis and it'll have it stay. So it's moving a little bit there, but it's very close. You can see it didn't take very much uh, force to make it stop. So at this point, we have everything forward of the roll axis balanced. Rolls balanced, tilt vertical balanced, and tilt four aft is balanced. So we're really close. We just have pan balance. We've simplified the mechanics now to just have two toggle clamps to adjust fore and aft on pan. And there's now no rotation adjustment for pan axis balance. There's a, this, uh, this tube is keyed and it won't allow this pan knuckle to rotate side to side. It'll only allow it to translate fore and aft. So I'm gonna illustrate um, a couple different versions of bad pan balance. So I'm gonna slide that joint way forward. And then I'll tip this. And the, the important thing to visualize when you're checking pan balance is when you tip this, you're, you're putting pan basically on a hill, the pan axis on a hill. And what we're trying to decide is if you drew an imaginary line through the axis of this pan motor, we're trying to see is the, is the center of mass in front of that axis, is it behind? And then once we know where it is, we're trying to move it so it's perfectly in line. So you can see I tip that way, making a hill this way, and it wants to go lens downhill. So lens downhill, means that our mass is too far in front of that center line and we need to bring the whole thing back. So I'm just gonna slide. I kind of grab in the front and then use my thumb to apply pressure on the back. Now let's check it again. Well, that was pretty lucky. It's pretty close now. So what I do is just clamp down and then check it. Check it there. Check it there. Check it there. So you can see our pan, act, our pan balance is really close now. All right, so this Movi is fully balanced and ready to shoot with. Uh, what I would recommend before you go out and shoot with the Movi is find a time where you can just sit down and practice this. It takes time to get used to the balancing mechanism. I think once you do it a few times, it will seem fairly intuitive. And once you see the, the benefits from shooting with a really well-balanced system, um, it makes a lot of sense to get good at this. So. I uh, hope that was helpful and just sit down and practice with it and good luck. Thanks.